In the cells topic, we covered the role water plays in supporting the plant cell structure. A hydrated plant will have a vacuole that is filled and that is pressing against the cell wall. We describe this as the cell being turgid. If the plant is not watered, then eventually the vacuole will start to shrivel up. This means the cell becomes flaccid as the outward pushing force is lost and the plant wilts. We also now know that water plays an important role in photosynthesis as it is one of the reactants in the reaction. Without water, photosynthesis cannot happen. Roots absorb water and the water is carried to other parts of the leaf by vessels called xylem. The water will contain dissolved mineral ions like potassium too. Remember that in the cells topic, we covered that root hair cells are specialized for water absorption by having a large surface area and contain lots of mitochondria. The root hair cells need lots of mitochondria because they use active transport to manipulate the water concentration within the root to encourage osmosis. Active transport moves mineral salts from the soil, where they're in a region of low concentration, into the root hair cell, where the mineral salts are in a region of high concentration. This requires energy because it is against the concentration gradient. Hence why the root hair cells have lots of mitochondria, which are aerobically respiring to provide the ATP to drive active transport. This means the root hair cells need a good supply of glucose and oxygen for active transport. The purpose of moving mineral salts into the root hair cell is so that the water concentration drops inside the root hair cell and the soil surrounding the root hair cell water concentration increases. Remember that dissolved salts lower the water concentration. Now osmosis can occur where water moves down a concentration gradient. Water moves from where it is in a high concentration, which is the soil, into the root hair cell, which is a region of low water concentration and the water diffuses across a selectively permeable membrane. Water then moves into the xylem, so water and some dissolved mineral ions can be transported to other parts of the plant. Remember, the xylems run through the roots, up the stem, and into the leaf veins to form a network that can help reach all the cells in the plant. Transpiration is the process where water exits the leaves via the stomata. This evaporation of water via the stomata helps to cool the leaf and regulate temperature. It also helps to pull water up the leaf because water has a special chemical property that causes water molecules to be attracted to other water molecules. This means water follows water. So when water leaves the stomata via transpiration, it helps to pull the water up the plant from the roots. We can indirectly measure the rate of transpiration using a potometer. We can't say that all the water we measure leaving the stomata is equal to what entered the roots because some water is used in photosynthesis. What the potometer is great at doing is seeing what happens to the rate of transpiration when a plant is exposed to different conditions. Simply, when water evaporates from the stomata, the bubble travels further along the capillary tube towards the plant. So, the further the bubble moves in a set amount of time, the higher the rate of transpiration. These are the following conditions that affect the rate of transpiration. Higher temperatures increase the rate of transpiration because evaporation of water via the stomata is faster at higher temperatures and the water diffuses more quickly out of the stomata and into the air. Higher wind speeds increase the rate of transpiration because the moving air removes water vapour near the stomata which lowers the water concentration surrounding the stomata so increases the concentration gradient. This causes more water to evaporate or diffuse into the local environment surrounding the stomata, thus increasing the rate of transpiration. Increased light intensity increases the rate of transpiration because it causes the leaf to open the stomata wider to try and maximise photosynthesis by increasing the uptake of carbon dioxide. This, however, also increases the rate of water loss that leaves the stomata. Higher humidity reduces the rate of transpiration because the concentration gradient of water inside and outside the stomata is less steep in humid conditions. This means the rate of diffusion of water out of the leaf is lower, so the rate of transpiration is lower too. In a lab, this can be achieved by placing a clear plastic bag over the leaf to trap the water that's leaving the leaf and increase the humidity in the local environment. Another factor that reduces the rate of transpiration is reduced surface area. And to achieve this, you can remove one or two leaves off the plant cutting, but you must remember to seal the now exposed stem with some Vaseline to reduce water loss. The reason why the transpiration rate is less is because there are less stomata, which means less water is now leaving the plant via transpiration. In the next lesson, we will look at the transportation of sucrose via the phloem 
and what happens to a plant when it's deficient in specific nutrients. 